In the shadowy world of gangsters and mobsters, families often played a mysterious role. Behind the notorious figures that made headlines, there were wives, children, and relatives navigating a life filled with secrecy and danger. But as time unfolded and the law closed in on these infamous criminals, the fate of their families took unexpected turns. What happened to the wives, sons, and daughters of these famous gangsters? Join us as we delve into the untold stories behind the criminal empires, exploring what happened to the famous gangsters' families. Al Capone's family. Al Capone, the infamous gangster of the 1920s, is a name that still echoes through the annals of crime. But what happened to his family after his death? As we delve into the story of Al Capone's family, we cannot overlook the life of his only son, Albert Francis Sonny Capone Jr. Born on December 4, 1918, Sonny entered the world just months before his father's rise to power in Chicago. Growing up in the shadow of his notorious father was no easy task, and Sonny faced numerous challenges throughout his life. After the death of his father, Sonny made a conscious effort to distance himself from Al Capone's legacy. He chose to remain in Florida, where he worked various odd jobs to make a living. Seeking a quieter life, Sonny eventually relocated to California. However, his journey was not without its share of troubles. In 1965, Sonny found himself on the wrong side of the law when he was convicted of stealing aspirin and batteries. Despite this minor offense, Sonny was never involved in organized crime like his father. In fact, he made a significant decision in 1966 to legally change his name to Albert Francis Brown, severing all ties to the Capone name. Sonny's life took another unexpected turn in 1968 when he made headlines for threatening to kill Edward Kennedy. However, this incident was an isolated event, and Sonny's criminal record remained relatively minor. He lived out the rest of his days in California, away from the spotlight, until his passing on July 8, 2004, at the age of 85. While Al Capone's son Sonny sought to distance himself from his father's legacy, we must also explore the fate of Al Capone's wife, May Capone, and the rest of his family after his death. May Capone, portrayed by Linda Carolini in the film Capone, largely stayed out of the public eye following Al's passing. After Al Capone's death on January 25, 1947, May Capone sold their extravagant Florida mansion and embarked on a journey to preserve her late husband's legacy. Despite the challenges she faced, May remained committed to upholding Al's reputation, even in the face of legal battles. In 1964, May Capone sued a production studio due to the similarities between Al's life and The Untouchables TV show. May Capone lived out the remainder of her life in Florida, away from the public eye. On April 16, 1968, at the age of 89, she passed away, leaving behind a legacy intertwined with one of the most notorious figures in American history. As for the rest of Al Capone's family, the details of their lives after his death are not extensively chronicled. Al Capone's mother, Teresa Capone, passed away in 1952. His older brothers, Ralph Capone and James Vincenzo, had moved on from their criminal days. James died in Nebraska in 1952, while Ralph Capone passed away in Wisconsin in 1974. Al Al Capone's brother Matthew died in 1967, his brother Umberto in 1980, his brother Ermino in 1985, and his sister Mafalda in 1988. Despite being related to one of the most infamous gangsters in history, Al Capone's siblings were not heavily involved in his criminal empire. It is worth noting that there have been claims of additional children in the Capone family, but none have ever been confirmed or sustained. Al and May reportedly attempted to have more than one child, but pregnancies ended in miscarriages or stillbirths. Some speculate that these complications were a result of syphilis, which Al is believed to have given to his wife. This disease is also said to have caused health problems for Sonny during his early years. Today, Al Capone's family continues to live on through his descendants. While many of his relatives choose to keep their connection to the notorious gangster private, some of his granddaughters, Diane, Teresa Capone, Barbara, and Veronica Capone, have recently made headlines. In 2021, they began auctioning off Al Capone's estate, offering a glimpse into the life and possessions of one of history's most infamous figures, the Bonanno family. The infamous Bonanno crime family was one of the five families that have dominated organized crime in New York City for decades. Founded in the 1890s, the Bonanno family has been involved in a wide range of criminal activities, including racketeering, loan sharking, money laundering, murder, drug trafficking, extortion, and illegal gambling. The family's roots can be traced back to the late 19th century when a young Salvatore Bonanno, known as Salvatore Maranzano in his early years, immigrated to the United States in search of a better life. Salvatore Maranzano 
Giordano, a charismatic and ambitious individual, quickly rose through the ranks of the Italian-American mafia, establishing himself as a formidable figure in the criminal underworld. In the early 1920s, Maranzano became a key player in the Castellamaris War, a bloody conflict between rival mafia factions vying for control over New York City's criminal activities. Maranzano's strategic alliances and cunning tactics eventually led to his victory in the Castellamaris War, solidifying his position as the boss of the newly formed Bonanno crime family. Under Maranzano's leadership, the family expanded its operations, engaging in various criminal activities such as bootlegging during the Prohibition era. However, Maranzano's reign was short-lived. In 1931, he was assassinated as part of a power struggle within the Mafia, known as the Night of the Sicilian Vespers. This event marked a turning point in the history of the Bonanno family, as it led to the rise of Joseph Bonanno, Salvatore Maranzano's trusted lieutenant as the new boss. Joseph Bonanno, often referred to as Joe Bananas, was a charismatic and shrewd leader who would go on to shape the future of the Bonanno crime family. During the 1950s and 1960s, the Bonanno family experienced a period of relative stability and prosperity. They expanded their criminal empire, establishing connections with politicians, law enforcement, and even high-ranking officials. This allowed them to operate with relative impunity, further solidifying their power and influence. However, the Bonanno family was not without its internal conflicts and power struggles. In the 1960s, a faction within the family led by Joseph Bonanno's cousin, Stefano Magadino, attempted to overthrow Bonanno and take control of the family. This internal strife, known as the Bonanno War, resulted in violence and bloodshed within the family's ranks. Despite the internal conflicts, the Bonanno family managed to weather the storm and regain its strength. Under the leadership of Joseph Bonanno, the family continued to thrive, expanding its criminal activities and maintaining its dominance in the New York City underworld. In the 1970s, the Bonanno family faced another significant challenge with the infiltration of their ranks by FBI agent Joseph Pistone, also known as Donnie Brasco. Pistone spent years undercover, gathering evidence and building cases against the family's members. His infiltration led to the expulsion of the Bonanno family from the commission, the governing body of the mafia families in New York City. The 1980s and 1990s were marked by a series of convictions and arrests of high-ranking members of the Bonanno family. The family faced numerous legal challenges, with several members and associates being convicted and sentenced to prison. These convictions, coupled with the turning of Joseph Messino, the boss at the time, into a government informant, dealt a severe blow to the family's hierarchy. Joseph Messino, also known as Big Joey, became the first sitting boss of a New York crime family to turn state's evidence in 2004. His cooperation with law enforcement led to the conviction of numerous members and associates of the Bonanno family. With Messino's arrest, Vincent Bassiano took over as the acting boss. However, Bassiano's reign was short-lived, as he was also convicted and sentenced to life imprisonment. Currently, Michael Mancuso is the official boss of the Bonanno family. However, his leadership has been marred by legal troubles and an ongoing investigation into his alleged violation of the terms of his supervised release. The Colombo family. Next up is the Colombo crime family, one of the five families. It all began in 1928 when a Sicilian-born mobster named Joe Profaci formed a bootlegging gang in Brooklyn. Profaci, a cunning and ambitious man, quickly established himself as a force to be reckoned with in the criminal underworld. During the Prohibition era, Profaci's bootlegging operation thrived, allowing him to amass significant wealth and power. He expanded into lucrative ventures like gambling, loan sharking, and extortion, solidifying his influence in the criminal underworld. Seeking legitimacy, Profaci aimed to portray himself as a respected businessman and community leader. He used his ill-gotten gains for charitable endeavors while secretly continuing criminal activities, maintaining a dual identity. Profaci governed the family with strict authority, demanding loyalty and obedience. His inner circle, including brother-in-law Salvatore Sally Mangano and Caporegime Joseph Magliocco, formed the core of the Profaci crime family. Throughout the 1930s and 1940s, the family expanded its criminal empire, dominating illegal legal gambling, protection rackets, and labor. Racketeering. However, challenges arose in the late 1950s when Caporegime Joe Gallo, also known as Crazy Joe, rebelled against Profaci's leadership. Gallo, a charismatic and ambitious mobster, initiated a conflict that escalated into a full-blown war within the family. The first internal war within the Colombo family was marked by a wave of violence and bloodshed. Members of both factions lost their lives as the power struggle intensified. The war eventually came to an end when Profaci brokered a peace 
peace agreement with Gallo, allowing him to retain control over the family. However, the peace was short-lived. In the 1970s, Gallo was released from prison, and tensions within the family reignited. The Second Internal War erupted, fueled by personal rivalries and disagreements over the family's direction. The conflict reached its peak in 1971 when Joseph Colombo, the boss of the family at the time, was shot and severely injured during an Italian-American Unity Day rally. Colombo's shooting marked a turning point in the family's history. Following Colombo's shooting, the family experienced a period of instability and power struggles. Various factions vied for control, leading to further violence and bloodshed. The internal conflicts weakened the family and made it vulnerable to law enforcement scrutiny. In 1991, the Colombo family was once again plunged into a violent and deadly war. Acting boss Victor Arena attempted to seize power from imprisoned boss Carmine Persico. The war, known as the Third Colombo War, was marked by a series of bombings, shootings, and assassinations. Twelve members of the Colombo family lost their lives during this brutal conflict, leaving the family severely weakened. Despite the internal conflicts and power struggles, the Colombo crime family has managed to survive and adapt. In recent years, the Colombo crime family has been hit hard by legal proceedings, impacting its operations significantly. One notable conviction involved Michael Catapano, a former acting captain. In 2016, he received a 6.5-year prison sentence for extorting gambling clubs and drug trafficking, dealing a blow to the family's lucrative criminal enterprises. Joseph Baudanza, a former Colombo family capo, faced legal consequences for stock fraud. Released in 2011, his conviction shed light on the family's involvement in white-collar crimes. Thomas Tommy Schatz Joeli, a former capo and street boss, was a feared figure involved in racketeering and murders. Currently incarcerated, he is expected to be released in 2024. Vincent Chicky DiMartino, a soldier in the family, faced weapons charges, murder conspiracy, and attempted murder. Serving his sentence, he is slated for release in 2025. The Colombo crime family continues to grapple with the repercussions of these convictions, affecting its overall strength and influence. Today, the Colombo crime family is considered the weakest of the five families. It has faced significant challenges from law enforcement and internal divisions. However, it still maintains a presence in the criminal underworld, engaging in various criminal activities such as racketeering, extortion, and drug trafficking. The Camorra family. The Camorra, believed to have originated in the 17th century, is one of the oldest and most powerful criminal organizations in Italy. Its roots can be traced back to the Campania region, specifically Naples, where it established its stronghold. At that time, Naples was a bustling city with a thriving port, making it a hub for trade and commerce. However, this prosperity also attracted criminal elements seeking to exploit the city's wealth. It was during this period that various criminal groups began to emerge, engaging in activities such as smuggling, extortion, and protection rackets. These groups eventually coalesced into what would become known as the Camorra. The name Camorra is believed to have derived from the Neapolitan word Camorra, which means gang or group. This term accurately reflects the organization's structure, which is divided into individual groups called clans or families. The Camorra initially operated as a loose network of criminal gangs, each with its own territory and leadership. However, over time, the organization evolved into a more centralized structure, with powerful clans exerting control over specific areas of nature. Naples and its surrounding regions. The Camorra's rise to power was fueled by its ability to exploit the social and economic conditions of the time. Poverty, corruption, and a lack of effective law enforcement provided fertile ground for the Camorra to thrive. They offered protection to businesses and individuals in exchange for loyalty and financial contributions. As the Camorra grew in influence, it began to infiltrate various sectors of society, including politics, law enforcement, and even the judiciary. The Camorra's criminal activities expanded beyond traditional organized crime as they ventured into new territories such as drug trafficking, counterfeiting, and money laundering. Their involvement in these illicit activities not only increased their wealth, but also solidified their power and influence. It is important to note that the Camorra's criminal activities were not limited to Italy. They established connections with other criminal organizations around the world, forging alliances with South American drug cartels, Nigerian gangs, and Chinese triads, among others. Over the years, the Camorra has faced numerous crackdowns and arrests by law enforcement agencies both in Italy and abroad. However, the organization has proven to be resilient, adapting to new trends and forming new alliances to maintain its grip on power. Today, the Camorra continues to exert its influence not only through its criminal activities, but also by infiltrating various aspects of everyday life in Naples. From extorting businesses and controlling local economies to influencing public contracts and even infiltrating institutions like hospitals, the Camorra's reach is far-reaching and pervasive the Gambino family.
For decades, the five families ruled over all of New York City, establishing their dominance through fear, violence, and a web of criminal enterprises. The Gambino crime family, one of the most powerful and influential of the five families, emerged as a force to be reckoned with in the early 20th century. The roots of the Gambino family can be traced back to the Castellamarese War, a bloody conflict that erupted among rival Italian-American mafia factions in the 1930s. It was during this turbulent time that Salvatore Toto d'Aquila, a prominent mobster, formed formed what would later become known as the Gambino crime family. Under the leadership of Carlo Gambino, the family experienced a meteoric rise to power. Carlo Gambino, a Sicilian-born mobster, took control of the family in 1957 after the assassination of Albert Anastasia, the previous boss. Gambino was a shrewd and calculating leader who understood the importance of alliances and strategic partnerships. One of the key alliances that propelled the Gambino family to prominence was their partnership with Meyer Lansky, a Jewish-American mobster and financial mastermind. Together, Gambino and Lansky controlled gambling interests in Cuba, which provided a steady stream of revenue and expanded the family's influence. During the 1960s and 1970s, the Gambino family solidified its power and became a dominant force in the New York City underworld. They controlled various criminal enterprises, including illegal gambling, loan sharking, labor racketeering, and drug trafficking. Their reach extended beyond New York City, with operations in Long Island, New Jersey, and even international territories. But it wasn't just their criminal activities that made the Gambino family notorious. They also became modern-day celebrities, capturing the attention of the media and the public. One of the most infamous figures in the family's history was John Gotti, also known as the Dapper Don or the Teflon Don. Gotti's flamboyant personality and high-profile criminal activities made him a household name. In the 1980s, Gotti rose to power within the Gambino family, eventually becoming the boss. He embraced the limelight, wearing expensive designer suits and mingling with celebrities. Gotti's brazen and attitude and willingness to flaunt his power made him a tabloid sensation. He even graced the cover of Time magazine, with Andy Warhol creating a striking portrait of the mafia on trial. But the rise to power of the Gambino family would eventually be followed by a fall. In 1970, the Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act, RICO, was introduced, giving law enforcement a powerful tool to combat organized crime. Federal and state authorities, along with politicians, embarked on a major crackdown on the mafia, viewing it as a personal legacy of their career. Careers. The Gambino family, like other mafia organizations, faced numerous convictions and prosecutions. The Teflon Don himself, John Gotti, was brought to justice after multiple unsuccessful attempts. In 1992, his underboss, Salvatore Sammy the Bull Gravano, cooperated with the FBI, providing crucial information that led to Gotti's downfall. By the late 1990s, the power and influence of the five families had significantly diminished. The mafia appeared to retreat back into the shadows of New York's underbelly. The flashy suits, magazine covers and A-list friends were replaced by a more low-key existence. However, the myth that the mob is long gone is just that, a myth. In 2023, federal prosecutors in New York announced a major operation targeting the Gambino crime family. Sixteen members and associates were arrested, facing charges under the RICO Act. The indictment outlined a web of violent extortions, assaults, arson, witness retaliation, and other crimes allegedly committed by the accused mobsters. The arrests marked one of the most significant mafia busts in recent times. While the alleged mobsters may not have the fame and notoriety of their predecessors, their actions serve as a stark reminder that organized crime still operates in the shadows. The Genovese family. The Genovese family, known as one of the five families of organized crime in America, has a storied history that spans generations. The Genovese family traces its origins back to several different towns in Sicily and later mainland Italy. Two influential figures, Giuseppe Morello and Ignazio Saietta, played significant roles in the early development of what would eventually become the Genovese family. Giuseppe Morello, also known as the Clutch Hand, hailed from Corleone, Sicily. He emigrated to the United States and settled in East Harlem's Little Italy neighborhood. Morello quickly established himself as a formidable force in the criminal underworld. He formed a gang that engaged in various illicit activities, including extortion, strong-arming, and the Italian lottery. However, it was Morello's counterfeiting operation that truly set him apart. His organization became known for producing high-quality counterfeit currency, which was a lucrative enterprise at the time. Ignazio Sayeta, also known as Lupo the Wolf, originated from Palermo, Sicily. Like Morello, Sayeta immigrated to the United States and found his place in the Lower East Side's Mulberry Street section.
intersection of Little Italy and Manhattan. Sayeta was a key figure in the criminal activities of the era. He was involved in extortion, strong-arming, and other illicit ventures alongside Morello. Together, Morello and Sayeta formed a powerful alliance that laid the foundation for the future Genovese family. Their gang operated with a level of sophistication and ruthlessness that earned them respect and fear within the criminal underworld. Morello's expertise in counterfeiting and Sayeta's reputation as a fierce enforcer solidified their positions as early powers within the emerging organization. Their activities and influence extended beyond the boundaries of their respective neighborhoods, establishing a network that would eventually evolve into the Genovese family. The Genovese family faced a significant turning point in its history with the outbreak of the Castellamare's War, a brutal power struggle that unfolded in the early 1930s. The conflict between Giuseppe Masseria and Salvatore Maranzano, two Sicilian strongmen during the Prohibition era, had profound consequences for the Genovese family and organized crime as a whole. Known as Joe the Boss, Masseria aimed to dominate the Italian underworld. The Castellamare's War, named after the Sicilian hometown of many participants, erupted between Masseria and Maranzano. Lasting over a year, the conflict was marked by bloody battles and assassinations. In 1931, Maranzano's faction gained the upper hand when Masseria was assassinated in a Coney Island restaurant. However, Maranzano's victory was short-lived, as he too fell victim to a purge within months. This led to the formation of the Five Families and the Commission, a governing body overseeing organized crime. The Commission aimed to maintain order and resolve disputes among crime families, marking a significant shift in the organized crime landscape. For the Genovese family, this period solidified their position and set the stage for continued growth. With over 225 members and 2,000 associates, the Genovese family became a powerhouse in organized crime. Figures like Joe Adonis, Little Augie Pisano, Trigger Mike Coppola, Jerry Catena, and Richie the Boot Boyardo contributed to the family's strength. The family held power in key sectors like the Fulton Fish Market, the Garment District, and the New York, New Jersey waterfront. Control over the International Longshoremen's Union allowed them to manipulate the flow of goods. Trucking operations, slot machines, jukeboxes, and hidden ownership in Las Vegas casinos added to their financial power. Expanding beyond New York, the Genovese family established satellite regimes in Massachusetts, Florida, and California. Their covert operations and strategic alliances allowed them to evade law enforcement. Despite law enforcement efforts, the Genovese family's adaptability and diversified operations made them a formidable force in organized crime. Their influence spanned industries and regions, solidifying their status as a powerful Cosa Nostra family in America. The Genovese crime family's primary operations are now concentrated in Manhattan, the Bronx, Brooklyn, and New Jersey. Additionally, the family wields influence in Queens, Staten Island, Long Island, Westchester County, Rockland County, Connecticut, Massachusetts, and Florida. The Lucchese family. The Lucchese crime family has a rich and intriguing history that dates back to the early 20th century. It all began with the Morello Gang, a notorious street gang in East Harlem in the Bronx. Led by the Sicilian-born Giuseppe Morello, the gang laid the foundation for what would later become the Lucchese crime family. Giuseppe Morello was a cunning and ruthless leader who established a criminal empire in the Italian enclave of Harlem. His gang was involved in various illegal activities, including extortion, gambling, and murder. However, it was Gaetano Tommy Ray a member of the Morello gang, who would eventually form his own family and lay the groundwork for the Lucchese crime family. Tommy Reyna focused on controlling the home ice distribution business, a lucrative enterprise at the time. He built a network of loyal associates and established a reputation for being a shrewd and strategic leader. Under Reyna's leadership, the family began to expand its influence and power. But tragedy struck in 1930 when Gaetano Reyna was brutally murdered, allegedly by members of a rival gang. This event marked a turning point for the Lucchese crime crime family as Tommy Gagliano took over the reins and became the new boss. Gagliano was a mastermind when it came to staying under the radar. He rarely appeared in public, preferring to operate behind the scenes. This strategy allowed him to avoid unnecessary attention from law enforcement and rival gangs. Gagliano's low-key approach, combined with his business acumen, propelled the Lucchese crime family to new heights. During the 1930s and 1940s, Gagliano and his trusted associate, Tommy Lucchese, led the family into profitable ventures within the clothing and trucking industries. They realized the potential for financial gain in these sectors and capitalized on it. The family's involvement in the garment industry gave them a stronghold in New York City, allowing them to control various crime rackets. While Gagliano preferred to remain in the shadows, Tommy Lucchese became a prominent figure within the family. He was known for his charisma and ability to navigate the criminal underworld with ease. Lucchese's public persona helped solidify the family's reputation and expand their influence. The success of the Lucchese crime family can be attributed to their close-knit 
tight-knit community, fostering loyalty and camaraderie among members. This unity made them formidable in organized crime, operating smoothly and efficiently to establish dominance. However, their growing power and wealth attracted law enforcement attention, leading New York City to take measures against organized crime. In the late 1950s, the family faced a setback when Tommy Gagliano's whereabouts became unknown for two years. During this power vacuum, Tommy Lucchese emerged as the new boss, expanding criminal activities and controlling major unions. Despite their success, challenges arose in the late 1970s with the infamous Lufthansa heist, one of the largest cash robberies in American history. This drew law enforcement attention and ultimately led to their downfall. The reign of Victor Amuso and Anthony Casso in the late 1980s marked a dark chapter for the Lucchese crime family. Unlike their predecessors, they sought dominance through fear and brutality. Their violent acts, including the murder of Bruno Facciolo, signaled a willingness to engage in deadly conflicts. Under Amuso and Casso's leadership, the family experienced a reign of terror marked by ruthless violence, conflicts with other crime families, and eventual downfall at the hands of the FBI. They ordered executions of troublesome or disloyal members, creating a climate of fear and suspicion. Conflicts with the Gambino family turned New York City streets into a battleground for dominance in the criminal underworld. Amuso and Casso's reign came to an end with their FBI capture after years of building a case against the Lucchese crime family. In 1991, their arrest marked the conclusion of their terrorizing era. Facing a life sentence, Casso chose to cooperate with the FBI, divulging family secrets, including the involvement of two NYPD detectives as hitmen and informants for the Lucchese crime family. The arrests of Amuso and Casso, along with Casso's revelations, led to the apprehension of numerous Lucchese crime family members. The family's hierarchy was dismantled, resulting in lengthy prison sentences for many. Despite imprisonment, Amuso continues to wield influence over the family from behind bars. The downfall of Amuso and Casso dealt a significant blow to the Lucchese crime family. Their era of violence and brutality caused internal destruction and betrayal. The once feared organization was left in disarray, with members cooperating with law enforcement and the family's power diminished. The Patriarcha Family the story of the Patriarcha family begins in the early 1900s when two separate mafia families emerged in the cities of Boston and Providence. Gaspar Messina, a cunning and ambitious mobster, rose to power as the boss of the Boston Mafia Group in 1916. Meanwhile, Frank Morelli, a shrewd and ruthless figure, formed the Providence Mafia Group in 1917. These two families operated independently, each with their own criminal enterprises and territories. Over the years, power struggles and alliances shaped the destiny of the Patriarcha family. It was Filippo Bucola, a cunning and strategic leader, who eventually emerged as the boss of the combined family in 1932. Bucola's leadership marked a turning point for the organization as he sought to expand their criminal activities and solidify their presence in New England. However, it was Raymond Patriarcha Sr., a name that would become synonymous with the Patriarcha family, who would leave an indelible mark on its history. Patriarcha Sr. took over as boss in 1954, following the assassination of Bucola. Under his reign, the family experienced unprecedented growth and influence. Raymond Patriarcha Sr. was a mastermind known for his strategic thinking and ability to forge powerful alliances. He relocated the family's base of operations to Providence, Rhode Island, a move that would prove pivotal in their rise to power. Patriarcha Sr. also formed strong relationships with the New York-based Genovese crime family and the Colombo crime family, solidifying the Patriarcha family's position within the National Mafia Network. With their newfound alliances, the Patriarcha family expanded their criminal empire engaging in a wide range of illicit activities, racketeering, gambling, murder, narcotics, waste management, robbery, loan sharking, you name it, they were involved in it. Their influence extended far beyond New England, with connections reaching as far as the Chicago outfit and the Buffalino crime family. But the road to power was not without its challenges. The Patriarcha family faced relentless law enforcement crackdowns and internal violence. In the 1990s, Frank Saleme assumed the role of boss, but tensions within the family threatened its stability. This period marked a decline in the family's power as several key members were arrested and imprisoned. However, recent years have seen a resurgence of the Patriarcha family, with the balance of power shifting back to the Boston faction. Under the leadership of Peter Lamone and Carmen D'Annunzio, the family has regained its foothold in the region. But make no mistake, law enforcement scrutiny remains a constant threat as authorities continue their relentless pursuit of justice. This was all about the famous gangster families. Thank you for staying with us. If you enjoy our content, our newest videos are just a click away. Way. 